how the hell do we start a thesis? Actually, I have no clue. <laughs> this is the first thesis that I'm writing ever. And yeah, I'm just taking you along for the ride, I guess. <laughs> and we'll see what happens. I don't, I really don't think that there's one right way to do it. I think a thesis is super personal. So do what you want to do, really. This video is basically a few steps that I took and I'm taking still to, to come up with the general idea of what my thesis is going to be and how to get started and start writing things, actually. Number one. The first thing I did is I bought a notebook. So I bought this recycled paper notebook. Um, it's pretty cool. It's pretty empty right now, but I have a few pages uh, filled up with notes, ideas, questions, general, you know, wondering of things and thought processes and stuff like that. And then a lot of notes from like research that I've already done. Number two. I opened up my thesis by choosing a general area and in this case I chose waste because it's one of the things that blows my mind and I've basically through the reading that I've done so far I've discovered that it's full of contradictions I've actually made a list of all the paradoxes I found I'm at four so far but I'm sure I'm gonna find more because our waste issue makes no sense number three with a thesis um, one of the important things is to be doing lots of research which, uh, honestly, I haven't really been doing much of. And I think that's one of the reasons why I started this playlist, because I want to be held accountable <laughs> for all the stuff that I should be doing and I'm not doing. So, yeah, this is a cool way of pushing myself uh, to do more of it so I can show you guys what I've been doing. And I think it also will be really cool to have this documented for later. Number four. As I said so far, we started by choosing a general area, in my case waste, next lots of research and basically throughout the entire process it's lots of lo lots and lots of research. But yeah, point number four is we start general research and we try to start understanding as many things about the topic as possible in order to find what we want to talk about in our work, you know? and. I think one of the important things is to set deadlines for yourself because the school and the teachers aren't necessarily going to. Uh, they might set big, big deadlines, but really setting deadlines for yourself, I think, is really important. Number five. Number five. Yes, I think so. Uh, we can start after all of that general research. We can now start narrowing down our thesis subject and actually propose a question. To follow throughout the chapters i mean i think it could be like a few questions but the idea is to have a specific thing we want to talk about like for example i could talk about natural cycles and the way that waste throws all of those natural cycles off and it creates an imbalance on the planet and that's why we have such so many issues with climate change now that's just an example i think after that, and so far with what I've done, I think the next part is lots more detailed research of the specific topic that we now have picked, and lots of reading papers, and watching videos, and reading books, and reading articles, and watching documentaries, and any kind of <laughs> source of information that we can find, talking to experts, talking to sociologists, and biologists and all kinds of professionals and experts and just have fun with it honestly i think that this is such a cool exercise here are a few things to keep in mind as you're starting your thesis first of all it's going to get frustrating you're going to start hating this topic because you have to think about it so much and take it and turn it and twist it in all the possible ways um, <laughs> so make sure that it's a topic that really interests you and then worst case, you know, it's a master's thesis, it's only six months, it's not a PhD. Find something that you're interested in and have fun with it, really. Through the primary process of picking a new topic and everything, I strongly suggest that you start typing things, writing things out, and getting a few small paragraphs here and there. Here and there. 
of things that you know you're thinking about and things that don't make sense to you about this topic or things that connect for you that haven't been connected in the past I don't know if that means anything to anyone else but it makes sense to me hope it makes sense to you <laughs> Don't be too scared because you have your thesis coordinator or your the person following you on your thesis. You have this person there to help you out and make sure you're going in a good direction. So don't be too stressed and you can always ask for help. If you have any advice for me, maybe you already wrote your thesis or maybe you have some advice for me, I would love it because I'm still in the beginning stage. I've started writing my introduction. I have about a couple of pages in and I need to have about five for the end of September. Here's a bonus part of the video for people who made it all the way until the end. Uh, I thought I would read out some of the stuff that I've already written because uh, I'm really super excited about it and maybe you are too. So yeah, enjoy. Welcome to this experimental portion of the video. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna read a couple of things that I really like that I've written down already for my thesis. Waste is something that no longer fills the function that we gave the original product, but has the essential function of being waste that maintains the value of the product it once was. What is wasted is also what is not sold, what stays, the remains. In economics, Waste is a product that does not have market worth. From this point of view, anything that we cannot exploit is waste, is useless, and therefore not worth anything. Purposeful waste has been a huge part of making profit for many companies. Planned obsolescence is a gold mine in terms of wasted materials, money, and resources. Someone once told me, I don't think the system is broken. In fact, I believe it was built exactly as it is, and is working as intended. This was one of those things that shakes your world around. I spent days and weeks thinking about what she said. I was turning it around, applying it to different examples, and I was amazed. I had never thought of it that way. It was a new perspective to me. I realized, what if our waste problem was actually intentional? What if the primary idea was to generate waste in order to uphold value in the market? What if social inequality was intentional and therefore what the West has been building is built on exploiting others? I then picked up this book, The End of the Mega Machine by Fabian Scheidler. 